Kiri, Well Kiri, Nelolo, Karen, Marguerite, Wilson, Ama, etc. That's a beautiful name. I really like it. It grew, you know. It did, it, but it's um, representative. Nelolo is mother of queens. That's a powerful name. And it's true, too. Karen, which I didn't like for a long time, this is the one my mother gave me, means pure, purity. Marguerite means daisy. Wilson, I'll leave that one till last. Ama is short for Ama Joyi, which is my husband's name, which is my community is gathered around me. Echefu is a shortened form of Echefu Nachuku, which means do not forget God. Wilson is my father's name. I've had it longer than anyone, and I have no idea what it means. It's like I keep, I keep saying tomorrow. Like, I know every single other piece of it. Every single other piece. Because I, I kind of chose the rest of it, but I didn't choose it. Well, your name is beautiful. It tells a story. I'm a storyteller. Uh, that's, that's our favorite. So I'm excited to interview you more. So you've introduced yourself. I just want to confirm with you that I have your permission to record the interview. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So what brought you to this event today? I came to sing with Lucy Murphy, who I think is one of the great cultural treasures of Washington, D.C. Cultural and historical treasures of Washington, D.C. And I came to sing with the Black Worker Center Chorus um, to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. That's wonderful. All right, and so thinking about um, the American Indian Movement, would you say that you have been involved with, with AIM, with the American Indian Movement? No, I can't say that. Okay. What I can say is that um, I'm a historian of Africa in diaspora in the United States. I understand that African peoples and so-called Indian peoples um, met be and, and, and enjoyed each other and themselves because they were very close in many of their traditions and the things they understood, their love of the land and their reverence for elders and the importance of spirit. Um, all of these things were important to both groups and they met on that basis. I can also say that when I was in graduate school attempting to finish a PhD in uh, U.S. history, which eventually did get done. The person who did triage for me was an Ojibwe woman who, re who, who, who remains someone so precious to my heart. Um, Rebecca Monte Kugel. She is a, an Ojibwe Americanist historian. And she's taught me many things, one of them being Pumpkin pie belongs to indigenous people. <laughs> and I had said no for many years because I said, it's not sweet potato pie. I'm not eating that. And one time I did that next to her. I was standing next to her and she said, what do you mean? That's ours. And I was like, ooh. So that is how I feel it is right for me to be here. Also, my mother told me that her grandmother had white hair that she could sit on. She told me that she was a Cherokee woman. And for many years I said, really, mom, really? But I believe that during the 1830s in the Trail of Tears, I believe, I have no basis to, to, to put this on, but I believe that my grandmother um, peeled off from the Trail of Tears and was absorbed in an African-American community. And she married my grandfather. And my parents were old enough to be my grandparents. So basically, she would have been my great-grandmother if my parents had had me earlier in their marriage. So that's why I feel right in being here. Absolutely. And, and so it sounds like thinking about like what your familiarity is with the American Indian movement, it seems like you have a lot of familiarity with sort of the long history of these two communities sort of, you know, 
yes. being parts of the same causes and, yes. and fighting for some of the same things. So yes. is that sort of how you feel you're familiar with the American Indians movement, is sort of that history? I have a sense. Yeah. I have a sense. Yeah. And they have so much to talk about. Yeah. Um, so thinking about what is also motivating you like today to be part of the movement as an ally to a lot of indigenous people, what, what's motivated you to take part today? I'm a singer and storyteller and a historian. My voice is for the purpose of amplifying and, and uplifting and telling the story that needs to be told. I have said for a long time, I give voice to people whose voice is not heard. So when it's time, when Lucy calls me, if there's any way that I can come, I trust that she's going to be amplifying voices I want to amplify. And I want to come. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what do you think inspired partnership between sort of the group you consider your part, yourself part of, both as an artist, as a historian, and then also in your community growing up, um, what do you think inspired the partnership between that community and the community that's here today? Oh, well, for one thing, we are not separate. There are many of us who are like me. My, my advisor, uh, Monty Kugel, said she was standing there with a, I was in California, the University of California, Riverside, and she was standing in the mail room with one of her, um, Native American students. And they looked at me and they said, mm -hmm. high cheekbones and a butt as flat as the Great Plains. Yeah, she's one of ours. And I was, I've never heard myself described that way, but it is so true. So we are, we are in convergence because of that early meeting and because of every, many other historical events such as the five so-called civilized tribes, which gives you a really interesting idea of what the United States has promoted in the world. The five civilized tribes were the ones that had slaves. But they were not, it wasn't, as my understanding, it was not the same kind of slavery that, that the um, mainstream here de um, developed, a very special form. Um, so we have had convergences and connections and agreements and disagreements. You can learn a whole lot from the people you disagree with. And so um, for many years, many, many, many years, Buffalo Soldiers, that was not a happy thing, but it was the metaphor, which is another thing we share, and the song, which is another thing we share, and the drum, which is another thing we share, although we use it in different ways a little bit. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So thinking about um, Indigenous Peoples Day, which just happened, you know, recently on, I believe, the 12th of October. Um, and last year, the D.C. government officially replaced Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. So why do you think uh, this change happened when it did? When it did? Ah, I was just saying to someone, our present president, number 45, has done more for the progressive movement than he ever dreamed. And so he uh, made things starkly clear for many, 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 many people who never even thought about these issues before. So I think that even though there was, there's still apparently kickback on this change. I think that the current starkness uh, of separation and, the, and the, the need to take your stand show your spot um, has made it more possible for this to happen. Absolutely. I didn't even know. I mean, <laughs> uh, Lucy said, uh, we're having this celebration of Indigenous Peoples Day. 
can you come and sing? And I was like, yeah. No idea that it was the old Columbus Day. I didn't know. All I knew that was that some people take that Columbus Day thing as a day of mourning. And um, <clears throat> I would, I, I'm, I'm happy that we're here to celebrate the beauty of our cousins, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, and we need to know each other better. So thinking about sort of your personal thoughts on this change in language to making it, you know, indigenous people's celebration, yes. um, what are your personal thoughts on, on that change? Mm -hmm. You know, Howard Zinn has a book, uh, The People's History of the United States. And uh, the first story he tells is Columbus encountering peoples in, um, in the Caribbean. And he says so many lovely things about them. And he says they'd make perfect servants, which is, of course, code word for, well, it's not code. It's they're going to serve us, but code word for slaves. Um, he had no right to be celebrated. He was a barbarian, um, someone who looked for, he was an opportunist. And um, this was not a wilderness without civilization, without cultivation. Unfortunately, when someone does not know how to see difference, too often their ignorance hurts so many. So it wasn't the guns, it was the germs and the attitudes. So he doesn't deserve a day. Um, and I'm grateful that these, these changes are being made, and I'm hoping, you know, none of these buildings around us, we don't know what we would have without Columbus. We don't know. But we could have had something different, I believe. We are not here to subjugate each other. We're all human. We all need shelter and we all have babies and we need to raise them and we need to eat somewhere. And we can manage to do that without killing each other, I believe. But that's just me. I, I'm with you. Um, Thank you. So thinking about the space we're in in Malcolm X Park, um, do you think, what's the significance of, of sort of holding this event at Malcolm X Park in particular? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. It's also Meridian Hill Park. Okay, check it, check it, check it. I don't know who that is, but she's doing a deal. She's doing it. Um, Meridian Hill Park, Malcolm X Park, is, uh, has a dual, dual name and a dual identity, I'm sure, in, in more than one community. Um, Indigenous Peoples Day and Columbus Day also has a dual identity. And it's very similar. Um, I think it's most appropriate that we are here continually, continuing to struggle with our identities, with who we are and what we're doing and why. We have to continue to ask those questions. I'm looking forward to approaching more workable answers with less fear and more growth. Right, yes. Absolutely. And thinking about for you, like your community's personal connection to the park, how would you describe that? Would, what kind of uh, connection does your community have to this park? Um, I really love this park. My daughter um, lived in, in D.C. before I did. I always wanted to live here. She got to live here first. 
And when I would visit, she would take me to the places she loved. She loved Meridian Hill Malcolm X Park. She loved the drum circles. She loved the dancing. And I love them because these things are close to us. And um, this is, park is a center for culture, a center for learning, a center for community, a center for joy, a center for families. And so it is important that members and groups in our community come here to celebrate their triumphs and their challenges and to make networks and learn to meet new people. And it's such a good thing. I agree. Um, and so I, I guess I would ask you in closing if there's anything else you'd like to say or talk about. And if you, if you wanted to sing a little something for us, I would ah. love that. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want to do. Um, I've just written a spoken word piece that I want to get out. Um, it, I'm, we're trying to get it up to YouTube. That's one of the reasons I'm running to get home. Um, and it's called Baby Get Out and Vote. So I could really use a little help. I, I got the clave. Okay, I'm coming. Keep that going. <clears throat> Baby, get out and vote. Mm. Baby, get out and vote. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Baby, get out and vote. Baby, get out and vote. Mm. Baby, get out and vote. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Baby, get out and vote. If you're any kind of poor, if you're any kind of brown, the man don't want you to vote. He wants to shut you down. We got a choice between the devil and the deep blue sea. Well, I don't know about you, but there's no choice for me. The man is dangerous. Baby, get out and vote. Mm -hmm. Baby, get out and vote. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Baby, get out and vote. Seen what the devil can do, and I am done with him. More than 200,000 are dead. You better learn how to swim. Baby, get out and vote. Mm. Baby, get out and vote. Don't, mm. don't, don't, don't. Baby, get out and vote. You think your vote don't count? I got news for you. He's doing everything he can so you never do. Trying to scare you and confuse you, trying to make it hard. Because if you go to the pole, he's going to the prison yard. <laughs> Baby, get out and vote. Mm. Baby, get out and vote. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Baby, get out and vote. Now let's get real. He is afraid of you. Afraid of beauty and brilliance and what you can do with your head on straight and your mind engaged. That's why my peeps, he's trying to keep you caged. Baby, get out and vote. Yeah. Baby, get out and vote. Ah. Uh. Dong, 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 dong. Baby, get out and vote. My cousin Ron said something truly profound. He said, pull your pants up and pull your lever down. Drop the ballot in the box to tap the button on the screen. That way, the powers that be become the powers that be. Yeah. Baby, get out and vote. Mm. Baby, get out and vote. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Baby, get out and vote. Now, when the White House turns and the Congress flips, you cannot go home and sit down. Let me give you some tips. Inform yourself, think deeply, and prepare to represent. So folk will recognize and honor your serious intent. Don't get caught up in cages of things. That way you'll be ready for what the future brings. 
Now, go home and stabilize your community to strengthen our immunity. And let your light so shine, amen. Uh, baby, get out and vote. Ba -ba -ba -da, baby, get out and vote. Do -ba -do -do -da -do -ba -ba -ba. Baby, get out and vote. Jump, baby, get out and vote. Do -do 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 -da. Baby, get out and vote. Do -do -do -da. Oh, dum, dum, dum. Baby, get out and vote. Oh, I That's loved it. it. Thank Woo! you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait for that to be on YouTube. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'll let um, uh, Professor Kerr know yes. when it gets up. So. Thank you so much. Oh, honey, Thank this was much. great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shay. Thank you so much. I saw you over there nodding.